So, Professor Ron Frankel, the head of Ben Zvi Institute, talked to Nimi Zuman, the CEO of Yad Ben Zvi. I would like to welcome you, sir, for your new appointment and I wish you a fruitful term and a great success. I'm very honored to open the conference of the Documentation Center of the Northern African Jewry during the Second World War on the ground trailblazing women, Yelen Kazez Benatar, in Morocco during the Second World War. So the choice of this very special topic is a bit of the end of the circle, a closure for us that began in 1977 um, by Dr. Sharon Barasher that operated in the name of the archive of the Jewish people in order to bring the archive of Elen Kazaz Benatar to Jerusalem. At that period of time, very few worked on her um, history, very few wrote about her, even mentioned her in the research. And in the article or in the book, in the beginning of the 80s of the 20th century, I met in Paris Dr. Miriam Lapidus, a daughter of Helen, and I learned from her about this extraordinary woman that was a fascinating character. Character. And uh, there was a book written about her life, but it wasn't published. As she remained a mystery, very deep in archives, and waiting for the researchers to discover the light and tell her story. And here it is, without any coordination between them, three books were published where uh, this very special woman uh, showed her light and shown her light. Professor Miller and Professor Israeli will present the fruit of the research in the continuation of this conference. And the third research of Professor Dumer Freeling from Ben Gurion University that wrote a very important book about Dr. Josef Schwartz during the Second World War. Uh, those who he called it the um, twine of the lines, and he discussed lengthy uh, Mrs. Benatar and followed her growth from a local leader in Casablanca and a northern African leader that influenced the Jewish life uh, tremendously. And we will hear a lot about that during our conference. Unfortunately, Professor Freeling couldn't join us here in person. We'll hear the lectures and we will ask ourselves the question, why did it take us so much time to actually redeem her story and to tell her life story? Obviously, I could have developed this topic and sometimes it's really tempting, but I don't want to take much of the time of those of you who will be lecturing. So we'll just present to you the development of the public awareness and academic awareness of the topic of the Northern African Jewry during the Second World War is one of the reasons of so. <clears throat> and I would like to thank the lecturers that take upon themselves a part and spinning the threads of history of the Northern African Jewry. I'm sure it will enreach us. Uh, based on the resolution of uh, 26th of January, at any year, there will be international day of the memorial of Holocaust, the uh, documentation of the Northern African Jewry tries every day to increase the awareness of the Jews of North Africa during the war. And those of you who remember and were here uh, did discuss the Jewish communities in Morocco of, in Spanish protectorate. I would like to thank all the partners and participants of this conference, those who helped us organize this conference, and especially to the claim conference that accompanies us since we established the Documentation Center of Northern African Jewry in the Second World War. Our main role is to expose and to make this topic more accessible to expensive public. And we do that through our internet site with research, such as the conference you participate at, and on Zoom as well, conference that we organize here. And now I would like to uh, give the stage to Professor Miraz Schenkel, the head of Ben Tzvi Institute. So welcome to the conference uh, in commemoration of the International Memorial Holocaust Day from Ben Tzvi Institute. How do you tell Holocaust? In David Grossman's uh, um, Shlomik asked himself, how can I tell a story? Uh, he's facing a material, a documented material, the way it's required, and he's trying to write his story in a methodical manner, as he calls it. But the deeper he goes, he fails even more severely. All the documentary material that is to his uh, disposal, he fails to move from one word to another, from one idea to another idea. 
and the pen was digging into the paper. Grossman writes, the hesitation of how to tell the story of Holocaust accompanies and preoccupies the public discourse in Israel uh, from the very beginning of the establishment of the state. And it seems that uh, this never dulls, but it becomes even more a dire need. It is tattooed in our collective arm, Ronnie Somic uh, wrote. More than a thousand faces this tattoo has, and those years that distance us from the fences of the camps do not dull even for a second the sharpness of the needle of the tattoo. The memory and the representation of Holocaust went through a significant changes during the period of time from denial and suppression to expression of pathos and mourning, heroical and narratives and jokes of Holocaust. To a certain extent, each and every one of the tribes of Israel um, appropriated the Holocaust in order to use it the tool against other tribes. Holocaust served and still serves as the mean of deepening the rifts between different groups and sectors in Israeli society. For many years, the Holocaust was represented as the unique benefit of Jews of Europe. It created a deep rift in the complicated relationship between Sephardic Jews and Ashkenazi Jews, and it gave a feeling that Ashkenazis made Holocaust into a very dominant part of Israel identity and excluded as Sephardic Jews from Israeliness. And we know today, and actually because of the center of documentation of the Northern African Jewry during the Second World War, that Jews of North Africa suffered from uh, Nazi occupation directly in the areas where they were under direct occupation and indirectly in colonies of states that were under Nazi occupation. In the area that were under Vichy regime, <coughs> they denied the livelihood, leaving freedom of movement and labor camps and um, executions that took place. In Tunisia and Libya, Hungary was sent to Bergen Belsen and Buchenwald and Auschwitz. And one would assume that if the Allies would not arrive in 1942, Nazis would impose the final solution upon the Jews of Northern Africa. And more than that, actually, North Africa was a transition station in the times of Jewish refugees to run away from the Nazi regime. Many of them were stuck, especially in Morocco, and were sent in the end of the day by the Vichy regime into the into the labor camps and detention camps. That was the meeting of brotherhood between the Jews of Europe and Jews of South North Africa. One of the most moving stories about this encounter of Jewish refugees and Moroccan Jewry, I heard years ago from one of these very extraordinary students that participated in this seminar that um, I taught years ago. She was older than many of the students I had but she was as sharp, as flexible as others, came from Morocco with her family when she was 16. And very often she memorized her memories from her father at home. She remembered the Saturday when they hosted a German refugee from Holocaust. Naturally, they did not have a common language that could have connected between their host and the guest. But the generosity and love that they poured upon the guest, the guest felt quite well. In the end of the dinner, he wanted to thank the host and to reciprocate them for the hospitality, but he didn't know how. He was an opera singer by profession. He stood up and he sang an aria from a Puccini opera. I don't remember which opera was it, but I would think that it was Madame Butterfly. And um, that accompanied for my whole life. This has been told by another woman, Annette Kazaz Benatar, that worked tremendously and relentlessly for those refugees of Holocaust that found the cover from Holocaust in Morocco. You will hear about Alain Kazaz, about this lecture. Uh, all of those lectures were um, output of very accurate research, a majority of the researchers in this field. And this is the time to thank um, 
First of all, I would like to thank you in the name of the Center of Research, Professor Chaim Sadon. He is the founder and the leader at Datsion Santa Fortis, an amazing team, Nessie Friedman. And uh, they're also um, various citizens of Germany that help us in this center. Last Pulse, Marius Verdastung. Um, Marius, what's your name? Anna Frat Nevich, she is a coordinator of Ben Zvig Institute, and any conference is impossible without her. So, thank you. Elen Kazes, as an inspiring image, will be. And to tell her story through a very interesting encounter. And the solidarity and, uh, and the background of the hull. And um, it seems to me that uh, her character is especially important in order to remind us that it's possible also to sing opera in Marrakesh. So thank you, the head of the Bantam Institute, and Professor Miriam Franklin, for those very important words. And now I'm honored to invite Dr. Niv Musuman, head of Bantam Institute. Uh, he's head of Yad Bantam of the NGO Yad Bantam. <coughs> So I would like to say that I'm very happy that this first opportunity that I'm having as the CEO of Yad ben is to participate in this very interesting conference. Professor Sadon, I'm very grateful to you for this activity of yours and everything you do in general, because I think it's so extremely important, because this is light. It sheds light to the lesser known corners of our history, where Israeli society is in such a dire need of research and understanding. And this is so important to understand. And Miriam, you mentioned that the memory of Holocaust and the story of Holocaust and the narrative of Holocaust <coughs> as one part of the Israeli society belonging to one side. And shows us distant corners that we were not aware of. When I think about this conference and your work in your institute, and this is one character that you focus, such a fascinating person. So this activity allows us, this act allows, allows the public to be aware how things move from such a very important research into the public knowledge. So it's so moving to see this shack fall. It's translated into French, it's translated into English, and it's been uh, broadcasted on Zoom as well. And why are the means of communications? Because I have so much to learn from this woman, Elenka says Benatar. She can teach us so much. I have so much to learn from her about mutual reciprocal support. A woman that before all the organizations, you will hear about that in the lectures, on her own, within herself, she took upon herself this responsibility, expressing solidarity, uh, very often taking risks upon herself. And uh, when we encounter such a character through research, and we're exposed to actions that are inspirational, in actual inspiration, and such a character that I think is, in fact, we're not that familiar to majority of the audience, and this research exposed those very interesting parts of this puzzle of her character. And Miriam, you mentioned amazing words of Grossman, how to tell a story. In my eyes, this is a wonderful way to tell a story, to relate and to connect to um, personality, a person, you know, to understand her endeavor. And the mutual reciprocal support um, initiative of one woman. In Casablanca, and not just in Casablanca, but the main focal point of her activity was Casablanca and this tremendous boon she gives us, those people that matter, this gift she gave us. And as an inspirational figure for us, creates so much sense of appreciation to all the researchers that work on that. 
הפעילות הזאת שנעשית בעניין הזה. And everything that is done about that. But in the research, and we talk about the historical research of their tendencies. If you have perspective, you can change different tendencies of research. You can take this research and lead it into different places where you can expose various facets that we're not aware of and tell the story in a deeper manner, in a more comprehensive manner. And um, using those paths, one can understand this mission. Our mission today because we constantly correspond with the past, we're constantly accruing the past, and in this sense the research creates a change. I would like to thank the partners of this coming here afternoon to learn more about Elen Kazazdan Rutar. I can imagine that her offsprings and those who um, sons and daughters of those that she helped probably are quite impressed by her character. I'm sure it will be a very teaching, very enriching conference. And I'm sure it will be a new value for us to deepen their research. And it's one of the purposes of this place is to, in fact, to embed it into education, into teaching, into conferences similar to this one. And uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's in our hearts. It's definitely in our hearts. Thank you, Dr. Mezuman, and all the best of luck. Mr. Chaim Cohen, chairman of the World Spanish Federation, cannot come, and I apologize. I would like to invite Dr. Orite Kutieli, head of the Haim Heretic Center from the Ben Gurion University, to greet we are partners uh, to the research, the path, and the thought, and have been collaborating. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Professor Miriam Frankel, head of the Ben Svi Institute, Dr. Yaniv Mizuman, CEO of the Yad Ben Svi, Dr. Chaim Cohen, Chairman of the Spanish World Federation, Dr. Anat Kutner, and especially Professor Chaim Sadon, the manager of the Documentation Center of the North African Jews. Thank you for many years of collaboration. Well done for what you have been doing and how you've been contributed to our research. After Morocco was liberated, from the Vichy regime in 1942 and when, while the war was still raging on in Europe, the Moroccan Jewish organization was established. This organization was the hair of a different organization, the Committee of the Women Against the War and Fascism. It acted in the course of the war. The establisher, founders of this organization were Jews and Muslim among the Jews, Fortuna, Sultan of Frecha, Ayash were prominent in the years later. More women joined them. The men of these women were familiar to history. The women were less so, but for one mention in a journal that they issued and they themselves read, history has forgotten them. One of the opening events of the Moroccan women was a grand event which took place in May 1944 in the Vox Cinema in Fez, uh, which attracted 400 participants. Miss Brandin, role of women in the coming liberation of France and described the coming liberation. She spoke about the role of women in the coming liberation of women and described what had happened to women in the U.S. and Sweden and uh, England and deduced that, like always, France remained in the backwards. Later on, she described the women's role in caring for the patients in the hospitals and summarized men neither don't like or don't or cannot do this. Her assistance to Jewish refugees who came to Morocco for in the course of the Second World War uh, to whom this study, the disseminar is dedicated, echoes after Brandino's name. And from their words and their report, 
appear the combination of compassion, femininity, women empowerment, and leadership. In times in which human free existence was is sub was subject to danger, they will be prominent above the daily heroic activity for survival. Some of them will be remembered, mostly men. Some of them will be forgotten. And here they are becoming activists as becoming uh, victims of historiography, something that Heim hinted to, and historiography will revive them. What are the historiographic dynamics that revive these figures? What makes us today find interest in these figures? We will not answer these questions today, but we will only hint to that integration of historiography and revived interest in Jews that come from the Islamic field. These historiographic trends that I try to renew, uh, find again the place of these figures in history. And that has raised interest in figures such as Helena Ben Attar. I would like to thank you for this conference. And I would like to greet you for the initiative and to hope that additional conferences in the field of the Second World War and other contests that oftentimes emphasize as part of human anxiety and threat the role of women in the course of wars. Women are always remembered, and then later on, they're forgotten. Taking the everyday simple women that historiography had forgotten and continue to speak about them here and elsewhere, that is our hope and our goal. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rory Tukutielian, and we will indeed continue with our collaboration. The last of our greeters is Dr. Anat Kutner, the director of the Joint Archive in Jerusalem, with whom, with whom we have and will continue to collaborate. Thank you for everything. Well, when you're last, you tend to be brief because we all want to hear the lectures. Now, at the beginning of the archive, one woman, Harriet Levinson, sat around the management table. And although she was groundbreaking as a Jew and as a woman, and she gave the joint its name, she was only one woman. Nowadays, there are many women around the table, and the organization is managed in Israel and in the U.S. by women. The philanthropic world has enabled, as we'll hear later on in the conference, activities, social activities in the joint served a uh, uh, workplace for many women, women like Noam Margulis, who was, the, who was the first country director in France in the years after the war, and also Helen Kazas Benatar, who is the focal of the conference today, the joint archive who serves a uh, home for the rich uh, history of the organization, has been active for a hundred years and includes more information about exceptional women when we are awaiting researchers to bring them to light. It is a pleasant duty to thank our dear friend and our partner for the initiative and energy in promoting such events. Without him, such an event would not have happened. He, not only history has many collaborators beyond on the scenes, but also conferences. I want to thank Eldad for his contribution and his patience and for rendering Chaim's vision into reality. Thank you to the members of Benzvi and their partnership. And I would like to thank uh, my colleagues in the Joint Archives who are sitting here too for their important work for exposing the materials and rendering them accessible to the broad public in the coming hours we'll hear about the intervention involvement of groundbreaking and inspirational women uh, among them helen benatar i wish us all a pleasant conference and may we all take initiative and be inspirational just like these historic figures thank you very much thank you Anat and I too must thank and I'm doing this happily to all who partook in the organization of this conference mainly the team of the documentation center f of the North African Jews and for that for whom this is a, a first conference in which he manifested his ability Nessia Sara the 
volunteers and all the others, all the Yad ben and the ben Institute team for their help in making this conference happen. The marketing team of the Yad ben our interpreters who are assisting us here, bring the message of the conference to those who don't speak Hebrew. Yuval, who photographs the conference and enables us to upload the lectures later on to the documentation center website. Like we said, this conference will be also be broadcasted on Zoom and later on we'll upload the lectures to the website. Thank you very much.